Well, in the wise words of Urinating Tree, the bloodlust of the football gods will never be quenched. The NFL community got some really crappy news today as it was announced that Cincinnati Bengals quarterback Joe Burrow is set to miss the rest of the season after tearing a ligament in his throwing wrist last night against the Baltimore Ravens. An absolutely devastating blow for not only the Cincinnati Bengals, but really the entire NFL. I don't know a single person out there that isn't rooting for Joey B and isn't rooting for the Bengals to do well. I mean, they're one of the true feel-good teams in the NFL, in my opinion, and they're somebody that... I just really, really never want to see in this kind of situation. I don't really want to see any team in this situation, but especially not a team that I really have a lot of respect for in the Cincinnati Bengals and a quarterback that I have a lot of respect in, in Joe Burrow. But at the end of the day, man, this is a situation, as much as it sucks, it is potentially beneficial to the Denver Broncos as it really, really does help our chances in terms of potentially making the playoffs this year. If you had told me at the beginning of the year that there was a strong chance that both the Bengals and the Bills would miss the playoffs this year, I would absolutely have laughed in your face. But that's the situation that we happen to find ourselves in. And now the Broncos, currently sitting at 4-5, and five, are one game back from that seventh seed in the playoffs, although they do have to get through a few other teams in order to get there because of tiebreakers and whatnot. But if this trajectory continues in the AFC right now, I mean, there's a strong chance that the Denver Broncos could sneak in. If we come over here and take a look at the current standings in the AFC, of course, the four division winners right now are the Kansas City, or the division leaders, I should say, are the Kansas City Chiefs, the Baltimore Ravens, the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Miami Dolphins and then currently the three wild card teams would be the Pittsburgh Steelers the Cleveland Browns and the Houston Texans but when it comes to the Cleveland Browns obviously Deshaun Watson is out for the entire season and Sure, you could argue that they were playing better at times without Deshaun Watson. I still don't know how they're going to fare in the latter part of their schedule. There could be a chance that the Cleveland Browns fall out of things here. The Houston Texans are just continuing to rise, and I honestly feel like there's a chance that they could overtake Jacksonville here for that AFC South lead because Houston has been playing just absolutely phenomenal ball, and there's been points throughout the season where Jacksonville looks like they've completely forgotten how to play football. Most recent case in point, that 34-3 shellacking at the hands of the San Francisco 49ers. So there's a chance that Jacksonville could continue to play their way into a couple more losses here, despite at one point possessing a five-game winning streak. That got absolutely destroyed in that game against San Francisco. So Jacksonville is a team that is kind of playing some suspect ball right now. The Steelers, surprisingly enough, with all of their offensive deficiencies are somehow sitting with a 6-3 and three record. Hats off goes to Mike Tomlin and that defense, man, because that team has just been really been able to keep themselves afloat despite an incompetent offense. So the Steelers are a team that should be in the position to make one of these wild card spots, but you never know, man. You really don't because Kenny Pickett has not played well, and we all know how Steelers Nation feels about their offensive coordinator, Matt Canada. And then you'll see currently we do have a bunch of teams that are in between the Denver Broncos and that final playoff spot, that seventh seed spot that currently belongs to the Houston Texans. We've got the Indianapolis Colts. Colts at 5-5, five and five, who are playing a backup quarterback in Gardner Minshew through the rest of the season. We've got the Raiders here, who finally got their record back to 500 somehow after firing Josh McDaniels, but granted, their last two opponents were the New York Giants and the New York Jets, and their next opponent's going to be the Miami Dolphins. So, I don't know if the Raiders are going to be able to keep up this really hot streak that they've been on, especially going down to Miami to play that really, really tough Dolphins team. And with Aiden O'Connell, I'm just not convinced that this Raiders team is going to be able to make a playoff run this year. Maybe if they had Derek Carr under center with the interim head coach and Antonio Pierce, but I'm not sure Aiden O'Connell is going to be able to get them over the hump. With Cincinnati, man, they completely stalled out and died once Joe Burrow got injured. And I don't think Jake Browning is going to be able to take this team out of the hole that they're in right now. I don't necessarily think AJ McCarron's going to be able to do that either so it sucks this really is worst case scenario for the Cincinnati Bengals losing Joe Burrow but that's another team that's going to be really really easy to get through honestly if they don't have their starting quarterback and then Buffalo Bills 
they've completely fallen off the rails, and obviously Denver already has a win over them. And then Chargers, we still have them twice on their schedule, and the Chargers are a team that really plays down to inferior opponents. They play down to their competition. We almost always split with the Chargers. We have every single year of the Justin Herbert era, but if the Broncos are going to want to make the playoffs, they're going to have to sweep the Chargers this year, and I think there's a chance they can do that because the Chargers are really pl- really prone to choking, or as we like to term it, chargering. Then, of course, we've got the New York Jets who are one game um, or tied with Denver right now, but they do have a bit of an advantage over us because they did pick up that win but r- against Denver. But right now, I don't necessarily think the New York Jets are going to be in a position to make the playoffs unless they make some really drastic changes both at quarterback and at offensive play caller. And Robert Sala is pretty dead set that that is not going to happen. So unless something drastic changes in New York right now, I don't think that they're going to be in position to make the playoffs. So there's a chance that Denver could climb above most, if not all of of those teams. But of course, it's all going to start this Sunday by taking care of our business against the Minnesota Vikings. And then the following week, taking care of business against the Cleveland Browns. We've got two backup quarterbacks back to back. So those are games that the Denver Broncos have to win if any of this conversation is going to become relevant. But at the end of the day, in wake of this Joe Burrow injury, the Buffalo Bills just being absolutely off the off the rails right now and other teams just being kind of surprise bad teams in the AFC, I strongly believe that the Denver Broncos could sneak into the playoffs given the situation that the AFC is in right now. And I cannot believe that we're sitting here and saying this. If you would have told me, hell, even three or four weeks ago that this is the situation we would have been in, I would have absolutely laughed. But with two quarterbacks in the toughest division in football in the AFC North suffering season-ending injuries and then all these other teams kind of falling off the rails in the Jacksonville Jaguars. And so I just really feel like at the end of the day, man, the Denver Broncos have a really strong shot at this, but it all starts with us taking care of our own business in these next few games and beating the Minnesota Vikings and beating the Cleveland Browns in back-to-back home games. All right, Broncos country. I'm curious, what percentage would you give for the Denver Broncos to make the playoffs this year? Right now, I think we might actually be kind of creeping towards like a... 35-40% chance because of all these injuries and all this crazy stuff that's happened in the AFC. But let me know your thoughts, Broncos country. Drop those comments down below. I would love to hear them as always. Be sure to leave a like on this video as well as subscribe and ring the bell so these videos appear in your notification feed. I would really appreciate it, guys. Those are two free and easy ways to show your support. Helps tell YouTube's algorithm to push us out and helps us get seen by more and more members of Broncos country just like you and me. And until next time, guys, I am your host, Gage Madrid. Red saying peace out.